handed uh, in this style? Yes, uh, I uh, wrote a paper and it was printed as an article under the title The End of the Protestant Era. And then uh, with a question mark, the end of the Protestant era question mark. And then a collection of many of my articles was made and we discussed the problem of the title. And I said now we all deal with Protestantism in some way, why don't we call it the end of the Protestant era question mark. The publisher said the rules of publishing to have a question mark in the title. So uh, we uh, uh, make it without a question mark, the end of the Protestant era. Then other friends of mine came, theological professors, Protestants, and said, don't say this, and the Catholics will say that I have said Protestantism has come to an end, which I didn't mean either. And uh, so I was between these, uh, these uh, two alternatives, and then I think we called it simply Protestantism, or the Protestant principle. And, uh, n but the article, the end of the Protestant era, question mark, was still in the book as one article. And there you can see what I mean with it, namely the question, can we have this kind of free, autonomous, as I call it, self-deciding, self-determining kind of religion which Protestantism is, which is always able to criticize all authorities and which is always able to unite faith and doubt. Can we, can we keep that up or has the time come that people are so tired of making decisions of their own that they uh, prefer to go under authorities, religious, or quasi-religious political authorities. <clears throat> it has been several years now since you wrote this essay. Uh, what do you feel about the present situation? Do you feel that uh, we're in a, a position now where people can accept this kind of responsibility or are willing to? Or no, I, uh, excuse me, I am afraid that it's almost the opposite, that we are now going in the same direction of conformism, which I was afraid of when I wrote this article. And this kind of conformity has uh, also sociological reasons. For instance, the big corporations, the suburban kind of life in which any individual non-conformism is much more difficult than it was in the big cities or in a period of the individual businessmen we, we have now a sociological structure which almost drives us towards conformity. And I don't know what will become of Protestantism if conformism is completely victorious. So the problem is as serious today as it was 10 years ago and perhaps even more serious. Perhaps we're even beyond the Protestant era at the present time if the other was the end. We, we, we might uh, be a little bit beyond it. Uh, already and the question is what can we do with Christianity if the Protestant principle must go underground as it perhaps must very soon. Mm -hmm. uh, we were talking uh, uh, Dr. Tillich about uh, the fact, uh, rather you mentioned the fact uh, just uh, a few moments ago that the name Jesus Christ has no meaning for a lot of people yes. in today's world. Uh, you have dealt a great deal also with the, the general problem of uh, the symbols and language associated with our religious tradition and uh, the problem that is raised for us in this respect today. Uh, would you make some comment about that? Yes, now I, I would say that we have learned now in the last 10 years, I think very generally, that religious language is symbolic language. That means that you cannot take any religious symbol literally. If you do so, you bring it down to a level to which it doesn't belong, to a level of the table or of our talks with each other. But religion belongs to the level of the infinite, the ultimate, the unconditional. And if we speak about it, we must use ordinary words and objects. But if we do so, we must at the same time know that we now use them not in their ordinary meaning, 
but in another meaning and this meaning I call symbolic and symbolic is not uh, something less than literal but it's something more it is a power in itself a great symbol cannot be created at will it grows and it may die but it's not at our disposal as signs are and so uh, when somebody says only a symbol I get angry and tell my students never say only a symbol even if I myself slip with my tongue sometimes but uh, say just a symbol that's the right thing here and nothing else you're assuming that uh, words are symbols uh, as well as such things as the star of David and the cross exactly words can be symbols historical figures can be symbols Art has symbols, and the last one, religion, has symbols. We have been visiting with Dr. Paul J. Tillich, distinguished philosopher and theologian, and member of the faculty, Harvard Divinity School, Harvard University, and his guests, Dr. Robert C. Johnson and Mr. Walter E. Wiest, both of the faculty of the Pittsburgh Theological Seminary. In part three of this series, Dr. Tillich and his guests will discuss religion and psychotherapy. This program was produced in the studios of station WQED in Pittsburgh. And from the minds of those who enter in, this gift is given, and this, our heritage. This is National Educational Television. In our lives, we witness in our lives, we each may choose the best of what has gone before, the best of that which lives today, to fashion us a key. And from the minds of those who enter in, this gift is given us, ours still to give and yet to keep. A gift of value great with life itself. And this, our heritage. In this series of heritage programs, we are privileged to meet Dr. Paul, author, lecturer, theologian, philosopher, and member of the faculty, Harvard Divinity School, Harvard University. In this third program, Dr. Tillich and his guests discuss religion and psychotherapy. Dr. Tillich is joined by Dr. Gordon E. Jackson, Dean, Pittsburgh Theological Seminary, and Dr. Robert C. Johnson, Professor of Systematic Theology, Pittsburgh Theological Seminary. Dr. Tillich, you're one of the few theologians, at least in the United States, who's interested in psychotherapy, too. What, what prompts this interest in psychotherapy? No, I would qualify your question from the very beginning. This was so perhaps 25 years ago or 26 when I came to this country. But now there is a very large uh, interest in many colleges and universities of the relationship, and even in the churches themselves, it, uh, of the relationship in uh, religion and psychotherapy. Now my own background in this respect lies in Europe and uh, started on two points. First, when after the First World War I met the writings of Freud and uh, people who were extremely influenced by him. And I was fascinated by the fact that we here have a scientifically verifiable way of going into the unconscious elements of human nature. Now, as you know, the word unconscious is not uh, invented by Freud. It was a philosophical concept which played a great role for hundreds of years. But Freud 
made a really 